Let's talk about the language of law firms. Like the movie business with its trade publication variety, the business of law has its own language and for the uninitiated, it can be confusing. This is a paragraph made up of words from the slang of big law. There are 80 words here and 14 terms that have a special meaning. If you work at a large law firm, they'll be familiar, but if you're a law student, if you're not in the industry, or if you're reading a legal trade for the first time, it's just jargon. We've invited Bloomberg Radio's Charlie Pellet to read the paragraph for us. Hello. If you live in New York City, you'll recognize his voice. After the tie-up between the Magic Circle and Amlaw 100 firms was announced, the headhunters contacted the firm's rainmakers with big books of business. Some lateraled, one started a boutique, and a white shoe firm looked like it could be no more. They could only make offers to half their summers. The pressures facing the firm ranged from clients moving to AFAs to a compensation system that went from lockstep to black box. Would they be the next Dewey? Did you recognize his voice? How about now? Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Okay, back to our paragraph. That was a little clunky, more vocabulary test than real report, but the point is to decode the slang of the business of law. What did it all mean? Tie-up is another word for merger that's common in other industries, but Magic Circle and Amlaw 100 are unique to law. Magic Circle has nothing to do with witchcraft. It's the name legal journalists use to refer to these five elite law firms headquartered in the UK and known for corporate and finance work. Amlaw 100 refers to the American lawyers' top 100 law firms as ranked by gross revenue, though they also rank by profits per partner and revenue per lawyer. The headhunters contacted the firm's rainmakers with big books of business. That sounds like tribal rituals performed in a library. But here, we're talking about legal recruiters reaching out to the law firm partners with loyal clients that are likely to remain a client even if that lawyer moves to a new law firm. Some lateraled, one started a boutique, and a white shoe firm looked like it could be no more. I still associate laterals with football, but that's also how recruiters refer to hiring experienced employees. With law firm laterals, we're talking about lawyers moving from one firm to another, but the legal media is most interested in partners who switch firms. That's because they're the most likely to alter the course of a firm's business, for better or worse. Boutiques aren't only small stores selling fashionable clothes, they're also law firms with specialty practices. And a white shoe firm is traditionally a big, old, East Coast professional services firm named for the white bucks they used to wear. These were the restricted establishment firms that lacked the very diversity that their clients are now insisting upon. They could only make offers to half their summers. Summers are summer associates, the law students who work for large law firms during their summer between their second and third year. Big Law's future lawyers typically recruited through on-campus interviewing, or OCI. In most instances, law students receive job offers from the firms where they summer. The pressures facing the firm ranged from clients moving to AFAs. AFAs are alternative fee arrangements. Since the financial crisis, corporate law departments have been pushing law firms for an alternative to the billable hour. Historically, clients have paid an hourly fee for work, but today clients want more flexibility, like billing based on results or having built-in caps. To a compensation system that went from lockstep to black box. These aren't related to dancing or theaters or even flight data recorders. Lockstep and black box are all about money. With lockstep compensation, we're talking about lawyers being paid purely on seniority. Pay raises are automatic based on how long a lawyer has been with the firm. Black box, however, is a more subjective system. With this method, a lawyer's compensation is determined by the law firm's leadership, ostensibly based on merit, but with a twist of secrecy. Would they be the next Dewey? That's a reference to Dewey and LaBeouf, the law firm created by a 2007 merger that had employed more than 1,000 lawyers in 26 offices around the world when it filed for bankruptcy in 2012. Dewey LaBeouf Lamb, what a disaster. There you have it, your guide to big law jargon for much more. Check out any article 
on the Big Law Business website.